Hello Ragers, today we will be taking a look at everyone's favorite Instagram account. And when I say favorite, I mean that if one day the dieters took over the entire world in order to form a totalitarian dystopian Chris Jong-un dictatorship and demand that every single person on Earth follows their account, I would simply oblige, because although I'm not the biggest fan of Diet Prada, I would not want to die by the hands of these two. Alright, poor attempts at comedy aside, today we'll be taking a look at Diet Prada, the Instagram account founded by Lindsay Schuyler and Tony Liu, both of which have had their woke, probably cherry hand sanitizer scented hands wrapped around the necks of the fashion game. In all seriousness, Diet Prada as well as their more recent posts have been a point of contention within the fashion community, so I wanted to look into that further and share my thoughts. So here's what today's joyous video will include. I'll start with introducing Diet Prada to those of you slackers who aren't tapped in, then I'll get into showing off some examples of times that they've either tried to push a narrative, shown bias, or just whatever else they've done recently that has caused them to lose some credibility. Following that, I'll share my thoughts on if Diet Prada is trustworthy or not. Now, I'm not trying to fight fire with fire here. I'm not going to play Diet Prada's game of causing problems for no reason on purpose. I'm not trying to cancel the cancelers. I simply want to share my thoughts and support them with examples in order to hopefully allow you to better understand my perspective in regard to the question of is Diet Prada trustworthy or not. All in all, with any news source or Instagram account or even this video, it all boils down to, hey, it's okay to follow this person. However, don't take their word as gospel. Consider their perspective, their biases, their intentions, and do your own research in order to come to a conclusion yourself. With that being said, grab your shittily designed, guild and quality streetwear startup looking ass diet Prada merch, and let's just jump into it. Terrible, terrible, terrible content. Initially started anonymously by Lindsay Schuyler and Tony Liu in 2014, who later revealed themselves in this article published by The Fashion Law in October of 2017, Diet Prada originally served as a platform for the founders to point out the nature in which fashion repeats itself and to show the ways in which designers are influenced by or borrow from previous creators. Tony is a fine arts graduate of the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, he moved to New York in 2007, where he would run his brand known as You As, which has been seen in the likes of Bustin Jeeber. Moreover, in 2010, Lindsay, who was originally working as a design and product development associate for Eugenia Kim, who just so happened to be the same person that Tony was working for. Evidently, they crossed paths and decided to link and build FAM because they fucked with the vision. Basically, as they were both fashion fiends, they would look at runway shows together and sort of joke around about different aspects of the shows. As stated by Lindsay, at first, it was just for the lols. They enjoyed making themselves, as well as the rest of the room, laugh with their remarks, which they eventually translated into meme-like, call-out-esque Instagram posts on Diet Prada, where they would coin and mint the phrase synonymous with their account, known as people knocking each other off lol. Through calling out the likes of Kim Kardashian, the actual brand Prada, Comme des Garçons, Vetmont, and so much more, one of their most notable endeavors, which funnily enough I remember in my first year of university, last year I took like a fashion concepts and theory course and the profs brought up this example, which was when Diet Prada ignited their feud with Dolce and Gabbana that started in late 2018, with Diet Prada calling out a pretty racy D&G ad that featured a model using chopsticks, as well as some accusations of racist DMs, which resulted in the label cancelling their much-anticipated Shanghai show. Through those instances, Diet Prada was able to cement themselves as a notable force within the fashion industry. However, in the summer of 2017, Tony told ID Magazine that now he's the sole operator of Diet Prada, but I think they're both on good terms and work on the account together. It's kind of confusing, but despite that, he has gone on to continue making big moves in regard to shifting the fashion scene, and has gotten the attention of the likes of head honchos at Gucci, who paid them to take over Gucci's Instagram in 2018 during the spring-summer show, on top of flying them to Milan in order for them to call out references in their latest collection. Moreover, in that same article by the Fashion Law, it goes on to talk about the legal side of things, such as wondering if any big brands will take legal action against Diet Prada Prada, and just noting the fact that neither founder of Diet Prada has any legal education nor background, but in 2018 they've gone on record to say that they don't consider themselves to be journalists, with Tony saying that we're just two people with an opinion, and Lindsay adding to that with we use journalistic tactics, but we're also in an age where those are tweets on the news, there's a lot of real journalism that's not journalism these days. On top of that, they say they always want to be transparent and follow whatever the law is, and that they're not dodging around all the legality of 
all this. At the time of writing this, Diet Prada has gone on to a massive whopping 2.2 million followers, they have an insanely dedicated fan base, and obviously their influence is the biggest it's ever been. They've gone on to sell merch and have just recently started a Patreon, so it's safe to assume that this account is their primary focus and a main source of income. Nowadays, not only do they post about people knocking each other off lol, they also dabble in fashion etc lol, period. Not all of their posts are fashion related, a lot have to do with current events, politically related content, social justice, and more. However, I do find it interesting that although they have previously stated that they aren't journalists, they have since advertised their Patreon as an independent source of news and information. Maybe since they've gotten the blue check, they've switched up on their original views of not being journalists. However, their posts are still heavily opinionated, contain bias, and on top of that, a blue check mark doesn't mean that they have all the credentials to serve as an independent news source. And I feel as if that's where a lot of problems arise, as obviously a lot of people see that they're verified and then assume that they must be a reliable source. Anyway, I'll get into that later, but hopefully now you have a better understanding as to what Diet Prada is all about, their history, and a bit of their values. I'll also link some more interviews and articles about Diet Prada in the description, and I recommend taking a look at their Instagram in order to familiarize yourself with their content in order to get a better understanding if you feel as if that's necessary, but with that out of the way, let's get into the meat and potatoes, or Beyond Meat Burger and Salad if you're vegetarian, of this video. Over the past little while, I, as well as many others, have come to view Diet Prada as the Buzzfeed or the Keemstar of the fashion world. Let me explain. Although I respect that they are so cynical in nature, as I'm kind of the same way, and I feel as if when they do their job right, they're a necessary evil, as we need people to call out these big brands and influencers and fashion houses on their bullshit, and Diet Prada has done a great job of that in the past, however, a lot of their recent posts tend to be reaching a bit too far. They don't always show their sources, aside from Instagram comments or screenshots, and a lot of their posts seem to be unprovoked and provide a lot of unjustified hate with the apparent intent to cause problems on purpose, they seem to be forcing a few narratives a bit too much, which is what I'll be showing off now. One of their more recent posts that has caught my eye was their post about Matthew M. Williams of Elix joining Givenchy as their creative director. Raunchy Givenchy posted a handful of black and white photos of Matthew to their Instagram, where he was the main focus because he's their new creative director. Now, this was met with a bit of backlash from commenters who felt as if it was a little weird or was outdated. They mainly focus on the patronizing tone, I guess. But to me, I didn't really see an issue with this as, again, they're just photos. This was a stylistic choice. It obviously doesn't mean that he's going to rule the brand with an iron fist as some sort of regime. However, Diet Prada was quick to jump on this with a post that highlights the photos as well as screenshots of a handful of comments criticizing the pictures with the caption that states, Nothing against Matthew Williams, but Givenchy's new community communication strategy is pretty weird lol. They say that six photos is a lot of focus considering he just joined on, and that they're not surprised considering the fashion industry has built up the aura of white male designers and basically worship them like gods, while females or people of color often don't get the same opportunity. They're basically passive aggressively saying that the praise of six photos isn't justified, as it's reminiscent of the greats like Alexander McQueen and such, but they end off with saying that they'll just have to wait and see if the praise is worthwhile. This received a fair amount of backlash from some dieters who left comments basically saying that this was reaching, but it also got some support as well. I do find it funny that they didn't include Matthew's statement that was included with the first picture Givenchy posted, where he says, I am looking forward to working together with its team to move into a new era based on modernity and inclusivity. I want to send a message of hope, together with my community and colleagues, and intend to contribute towards positive change. Don't get me wrong, I support Diet Prada's message of wanting more diversity, and that's something that they've been striving towards since the dawn of their page. However, I feel as if they are too quick to jump to conclusions on this one. Although they said they'll have to wait and see, and that they were mainly calling out the notion of the fashion industry typically worshipping white males as messiahs, that shouldn't take away from Matthew's work. This is a monumental achievement for him, and I feel as if it should be celebrated. They should judge people by the quality of their work and not the color of their skin or if they have a cock or vag. I don't know, I just feel as if this one was too forced. Again, as an 18 year old white male living in a small Canadian town, I don't know everything so I won't try to act as if I know what's best for people of color, females or the like. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on this one, and let's check out another example. Here's another pretty controversial post that they made recently. Diet Prada has since deleted this post about Kanye and the Gap, but it was certainly a miss. Luckily, GQ posted an article about this, so that's what we'll be going over now. Basically, after the announcement of the Kanye and Gap 10-year partnership, Diet Prada was quick to make some sort of parody mock-up designs and post them saying that they had a sneak peek at the Yeezy Gap collection. 
The shirts featured slogans such as MAGA, slavery was a choice, etc. It was meant to be a satire of Kanye's support for the orange man, but many commenters and people within the fashion community felt as if this one was a little too far, because it was out of line, and GQ states that they had failed to acknowledge that Kanye had appointed a notable Nigerian-British creative as the design director for this Gap partnership. Before that, they had also talked about the Gap postponing their Telfar collab, which ruffled a few feathers as well. But a lot of people spoke out saying this was a stale, lazy approach to satire, and it was ultimately a joke at the expense of three black designers. So there goes their message of diversity out the window just because Kanye has conflicting political views. As I mentioned, Diet Prada has since deleted the post, but before that they had edited the post in order to issue an apology that is summed up as follows. We've been carefully reading our comments and realize our faults in this post. They meant to open up a conversation about the gap linking with someone like Kanye who doesn't shy away from sharing his political views. But they missed. They go on to say that they've always tried to support small brands, and they missed the fact that Moa Lola had been appointed as a design director for the Easy Gap collection, and that they didn't intend to discredit her. Then they thanked their followers for keeping them in check. And that apology was met with some backlash as well. It is indeed ironic that the infamous callout account was called out. The article goes on to say that in an email to GQ, Daya Prada wrote that they're still thinking of a better way to apologize, and that as a lot of apologies can be worthless when the cancel culture hive mind has decided their thoughts already, which is also pretty ironic since Diet Prada has been a driving force behind the cancellation of so many people and brands, uh, but basically they said that they want to take this time to process and learn from their mistakes. The article goes on to talk more in depth about Diet Prada and cancel culture as a whole, which I'll link below as it's definitely worth a read. Moving on, here's one that I've kind of talked about already on on my video about Gosha, so I won't go too in-depth, but Diet Prada played a big role in pushing the cancel Gosha narrative. Real quick, in short, there were allegations that Gosha had asked an underage model for nudes, but Gosha was apparently just asking because he needed pics for a casting. All of the texts do look sus and creepy, his native language obviously isn't English, so miscommunication was definitely a factor. Regardless, Diet Prada, nor anyone else besides the parties involved, didn't have the full story as there was a lot more going on behind the scenes on both sides. Regardless, Diet Prada went on to push the narrative that Gosha wanted nudes from a fan, and didn't mention that it was a model he was talking with. They also made another post about how Gosha's front of being in touch with the youth is a cop-out and that he's essentially grooming his young models. They even compare him to Michael Jackson. That post was certainly a reach, as one of the models even commented saying how BS it was. That's just a very quick summary of it. I recommend watching my Gosha video for a better understanding if you're unfamiliar with the situation, but Diet Prada certainly had it out for Gosha in this case. Which, don't get me wrong, it's important to keep these designers in check, and the line needs to be drawn somewhere, because these higher-ups have been known to abuse their power to manipulate those below them, but in this case, I feel as if Diet Prada jumped to conclusions too quickly without having all the facts. Another Diet Prada post that I, as well as many others, thought had a good message but poor execution was this one here about the lack of people of color in Dior's Autumn Winter 2020-2021 collections film, which was based around and inspired by a variety of Greek myths. Now, although I get where Diet Prada is coming from, their message of wanting to include talented people of color is definitely important. However, this film, which was shot in and around Rome, where the filmmaker Matteo Garone wanted to explore and revisit Greek myths such as Ovid's Metamorphosis, I won't even pretend to know what that is. But anyway, Dior's Women's Wear creative director has typically been very diverse and inclusive, but with this particular film, Matteo had full freedom to celebrate this artistic richness, which was said in Dior's statement. Keep in mind, I'm no expert on ancient Greeks, so I won't say for certain that, oh, they were all white, yada yada, because history is typically viewed with a white lens, and the ancient Greeks didn't really view themselves as white, it was either you were a Greek or a barbarian, but from what I've seen, and, and through what I've looked at on the internet, which, it's illegal to lie on the internet, so this must be true, by America's standards, the majority of the ancient Greeks were white. Now, if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments, but regardless of that, this was Matteo's vision for the film. I can't say for certain if he wasn't focused on race, but I'd imagine he was rather focused on honoring Greek heritage, myths, and traditions. But back to the Diet Prada post, they captioned their photo with their thoughts on this topic, saying that although Maria's last show had over 30% models that were people of color, and furthering that by saying this film, directed by the Italian male Matteo, was unusual because Maria usually collaborates with female creatives. 
They mentioned the statement that Dior released, then went on to say, surely it was possible to honor Greek mythology and still cast people of color. They mentioned Ethiopia being a mythical land recorded in Greek literature, which includes the work of Homer, and that several figures in Greek history were believed to be black. They talk more about racism, diversity, whitewashing, and more, which are all obviously important topics that need to be considered. But I feel as if Dior has done a great job recently at tackling those topics naturally. For instance, for Dior Men's Summer 2021, Kim Jones worked with Amoaka Bofa, I am so sorry for pronouncing that, uh, who is an artist from Ghana. They released what I thought to be a great collection together, and they used what I believe to be a cast of models entirely made up of people of color, but of course Diet Prada didn't post about that. Anyway, getting back to the Greek Diet Prada post, there are a lot of commenters who didn't really see an issue with this, a lot were confused and figured this post was another reach. I agree with the comments saying that since this film isn't supposed to be historically accurate, they definitely could have included more diversity, but I just feel as if Diet Prada was, again, too quick to call racism. They could have been a little more understanding and less harsh, however, I know that usually isn't their M.O. I was going to talk more about this post where they accused Demna of Vetmont of knocking off the Margiela tabby boots, but this post actually wasn't that bad, as they acknowledged that Demna did used to work at Margiela, and they didn't go too hard on him, but I just feel as if this post was unnecessary, because if they knew that Demna and Vetmont have heavily referenced and appropriated designs in the past, on top of that they were aware of Demna's time at Margiela, you'd think that they would also be aware that he obviously isn't ripping off or plagiarizing, he's just paying homage to the iconic boot as well as referencing his own time at Margiela. Demna also addressed this criticism by saying, I went back to my roots as a designer at Margiela. I wanted to show what Margiela means for me in Vetmont. It's an approach, not a person. It is a way of loving clothes and breaking the rules with these clothes. That's what we did. Everything is an appropriation. We live in a world full of references, and references exist to feed us in order to create something new from them. Demna hasn't been shy about this in the past either, which is probably why Diet Prada didn't go as hard on him, but still, I don't know, I just feel as if this post wasn't necessary. Now, those are just a handful of examples, as I didn't want to make this video 20 hours of me just ripping into every time Diet Prada is messed up. However, if you want more content on the topic of Diet Prada, I recommend this video by the Fashion Archive, where it goes more in depth on Diet Prada's bias against Virgil, as well as New Gear Boy's video, where he also talks about their biases, and he takes a look at more of their merch. I'll leave links to both of those videos below. Regardless, hopefully through those examples, you're able to get a better understanding as to why a lot of people have some issues with Diet Prada or don't exactly trust them. Again, I'm a fan of people who approach things with a cynical view, but it obviously has to be within reason. Insert meme of me screaming, No, you can't just call out a designer because he is white and a male! Anyway, I feel as if Diet Prada certainly wears their biases on their sleeve, and they often try to push and force narratives too far sometimes, which results in a lot of their posts being considered reaches or just complete misses. But let me know your thoughts. Should they be held more accountable for their opinions because they have a blue check mark? Also, this dislike or distrust for Diet Prada has been building within the fashion community for a while now from what I've seen, or at least within the more niche fashion meme community, as in the comments of memes made at the expense of Diet Prada, a lot of genius playboy billionaire philanthropists who follow fashion meme pages share their philosophical thoughts on Diet Prada. The comment sections are truly a meeting of the minds. But jokes aside, looking in the comments of Diet Prada or posts about Diet Prada are good ways to gauge how the dieters are taking the post. I've noticed recently that some of their fans aren't really putting up with their posts, and as seen with the Kanye Gap one, they even go as far as to check their vibe by calling out the callout account. However, at the time of recording this, Diet Prada has been playing it safe with a lot of their posts, so I really do hope that they are trying to improve and learn from their past mistakes in order to avoid spreading narratives that don't include the full story. Finally, as I mentioned before, always take everything you see on Diet Prada or any similar source run by people who aren't journalists, or just any source in general because hashtag fake news. Just take it with a grain of salt. Always do your own further research and consider possible biases and whatnot before coming to any conclusions. So, is Diet Prada trustworthy? I mean, it really depends. First off, they're not journalists, so there's that but I feel as if they're a good starting place for fashion news and social commentary as well as political and social justice issues. As previously mentioned, don't take their word as gospel, always look into things further. It's awesome that they're trying to strive for increased diversity, but as we've seen, sometimes they go too far. I'm definitely not saying to unfollow them immediately and that they're cancelled, because I'm not Diet Prada. Just be skeptical, like with everything on the internet. I don't know why I'm even saying that. I know the vast majority of you are tapped-in Zoomers who know how this dang internet works. 
but just look at the bigger picture. Anyway, again, I'm interested to know your thoughts on this. Also, should I call you guys the fuckers because diet product fans are called the dieters? I think that'd be pretty funny. But regardless, thank you for watching. I appreciate that a lot. Stay tuned to the channel for more mindless content to consume. My next video will probably have to deal with, like, things to know before supporting smaller brands. And after that, I plan on touching on the subject of bootlegs and the custom shoe craze going on right now. And soon I'll probably do a Q&A or something, considering we're almost at 25k subs, which is pretty crazy to me. But anyway, thank you for watching to the end. Enjoy the banger exclusive Pierre Born outro that I- I mean, that Pierre made just for you. Later, Ragers.